musical chairs, yes. So these are some amazing women. You may or may not know who they are. And so my first question, you now you know, welcome to my world. This is what I preach into every week. Yeah, it's like, bam. Okay, you guys are just glowing. I, can I just say that? Just like, like halos on each one of you. Yeah. Some of the halos are bigger than others, but that's okay. Uh, no, it's kidding. No, it's kidding. <laughs> I was not going to say who. Um, no, you know what? Um, I'm really looking forward to this conversation. And uh, what I want to do is just, if we could pass the mic down and take 15 seconds, tell people who you are, no, 20, 25, most, and tell people who you are, how long you've been at Manifest, and where you're at, what stage you're at on the mothering journey. Okay? Like, how old are your kids, or where are you at? Okay? So go for it. I'm Elizabeth, and my husband and I have been attending Manifest since about November. I'm a veteran of 32 years of motherhood. We have three adult children, two in Calgary and one in Kelowna, and so I'm at a mothering from a distance stage. Wow. I'm Carlin, and, oh, oh wow. Um, <laughs> My husband Stephen and I have <laughs> been coming since uh, Manifest first started in the gym, so it's been about four, four and a bit years, and we have six-year-old twin boys. I'm Suzanne, and uh, we've been attending Manifest for three years. We walked in and never walked back out, and we love it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and. <laughs> we have Rob and I have four kids, a ten year almost ten year old. I gotta think. <laughs> <laughs> this is a whole bunch. Almost ten year old, <laughs> a twelve year old, an almost fourteen year old, and a fifteen year old. Yeah. Hi, I'm Kelly, and I'm at the lots of coffee, all the coffee <laughs> stage. All the coffee. Um, Sam is eleven, Zoe is eight. No, she's nine. <laughs> She's nine, yes. So, yes, that's the coffee. And so your much children, th they're alive. So they're they're got, alive, yeah, yeah. they're upstairs, <laughs> absolutely. And, <laughs> um, and I've been coming, I think, since about 2016. I, I measure everything by school years. I think, I think yeah, it was about yeah. then, yeah. And I'm Shauna. And... <laughs> <laughs> and um, I have been with Manifest <laughs> before it started, because <laughs> Jesus said so. Yeah. <laughs> and um, we have three amazing kids, um, and I am in that. Wah, I am in that. Uh, we've almost grown them all up. I call groaned because there's a lot of groaning. Um, our last one graduates high school this year, so they're almost all grown up. Yeah. Awesome. Now, here's how this is going to work. So we, I've got like six questions. We've got 32 minutes, so we've got a lot to do. So we don't necessarily all have to answer each, each question, but if I ask a question and you go, ooh, ooh, I want that one, then grab the mic. Or if, you do, if no one wants it, then I'll just give it to one of you. How's that? So. Um, actually, this one should, we'll start, we'll start with the low-hanging fruit, I hope, and that, that is, um, as you think about your mothering journey so far, what would you say have been some of the most rewarding parts of mothering and the mothering journey for you? Don't all just leap. <laughs> just. It's really tough because I can actually see the timer from where I'm at, so I'm like, and go, go, <laughs> go. Um, one of the most rewarding parts, I think, I, for me, has been... Um, that I can do it. I can mm. do this. I have a capacity for it. Um, because when I started, we, um, when I was part of a we, we weren't sure if we were meant to have kids. And God did never say a yes to me. But I remember sharing with my husband at the time, um, I'm not feeling a no, so let's see what happens. And so began this long fertility journey. And so when my kids were born, it was something that I didn't grow up thinking about. Oh, I can't wait to be a mommy. And it was really tough. And one of the most rewarding things is I can do this because now I'm a single mom on my own and there's still the cuddles and the laughter. Oh my gosh, we laugh. And <laughs> the realness of it, like when a consequence doesn't work and I look at my kid and go, well, that didn't work. And we all start laughing and then we go back to the drawing board. <laughs> 
I think one of the most exciting things is uh, when your kids, when your kids are like, hey mom, look what I can do, and you're watching the progress, mm. the progression of a skill that they're performing, or when you get a phone call as you're driving down the road, but it was hands-free, <laughs> as you're driving down the road because your daughter who didn't think she wanted to try out for a specific sport, tried out and she was successful and she actually Yay. was excited about it. Oh, that's awesome. One of the most rewarding parts for me is watching my children sleep. <laughs> Such a wonderful, peaceful time. Um, Sprinkling fairy dust yeah. over them. They're yeah. so cute when they're sleeping. <laughs> yeah. um, but also just seeing them catch something that we've been trying to teach them and it sometimes feels like it it's not just it's not getting through and then mm -hmm. all of a sudden you see oh they caught that that became part of who they are and yeah it's just it's really cool so the message here is your children will eventually catch things just just persevere it takes a long time <laughs> And I thought about it a lot, because in 32 years, there have been a lot of fantastic moments. But I kept coming back to the new mom moment when your child is crying, and it's the middle of the night, and you pick them up, and you change them, and you feed them, and they fall asleep in your arms. And I look mm -hmm. down, and there's a perfect relationship. I have met all the needs, mm -hmm. and they are perfectly content. And there's that sense of, mm -hmm. OK, that's my job. I will do that. Uh. It's of course the beginning of a slippery slope because before too long they don't like your food, they won't <laughs> dress to stay warm, and your arms are just not big enough to shelter them. But that moment when you have met all their needs is beyond description. And you've etched it there. I can see that's good. Shauna, I know you didn't answer this one, but I'm going to make sure that you do. What's the rewarding? You have some here, so they're listening. You said we could skip. <laughs> I also said that I had, you know, Power. Executive power, yeah. So, um, oh, you know, I think the most rewarding is also the hardest. Why didn't any of you cry? <laughs> Come on, um, is also the hardest because you are so grateful that you have, um, I mean. There are so many moms out there and um, mom figures out there um, that have people in their lives that, um, you know, the, the, the fact that our kids are healthy and that they, I was just talking to Elizabeth about this this week, is that they're healthy and they are, they are, they are spreading their wings and they are, and it's good and it's hard, but it's rewarding. So rewarding can also be hard. Yeah. That was my next question, actually. Start with the rewarding stuff, and then go, what, what's been some of the most painful or difficult parts of this mothering journey for you? <laughs> you were onto something. Yeah. I'll just really. continue, and I promise to share. <laughs> um, I definitely can answer this. I, 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 this one is uh, when um, you're helpless. As helpless. a mom, helpless, when you feel, you know, and well, it is helpless and it's not because you know Jesus is there. Um, but in moments of our kids' lives where um, there is nothing that we can do to heal them and only Jesus can. And that moment of, mm. like you're lying in my arms and there's nothing I can do and you're just crying out to God. Yeah. But he's been faithful. Yeah. He's been faithful. So, yeah. and he is. Mm -hmm. <laughs> There's just coffee in there, right? Yeah. It, yeah so. <laughs> totally. Coffee. Uh, <laughs> um, the most painful part of my mothering journey was waking up one morning and realizing that I was going to be doing this as a single mom. Mm. That was the worst moment of my life, um, which can also turn out to be really rewarding in that nine years later, I'm like, and they're all alive, and mm -hmm. we're co-parenting, and we're doing this. But that was truly the most painful part. And right up there, too, was watching my kids go through the pain. Zoe was a baby. 
um, but I'm seeing stuff now, but Sam would get stomach aches and unexplained. It was him just dealing with the breakup of a marriage. And that helpless feeling, um, watching the, the journey that Sam's going through, because he, he's a unique kid and he has some difficulties and school is not his best fit, but it's not going away. So mm -hmm. just that's a really hard time. And I don't know what I would do without my faith. Because yeah. when I don't have my an when I don't have answers, I just go, and over to you, God, you know. And isn't that the truth? I often try to do it on my own, and that's when it's really painful, you know. So I'm trying to not do that anymore. <laughs> uh, well, I always wanted to be a mom, and I was classified as Susie Homemaker in school, but I never, in my wildest dreams, thought that it would involve. Uh, multiple visits to hospital clinics and therapy sessions. Um, I just didn't think that that would be a part of our journey or, okay, I'm gonna cry. <laughs> um, pleading out to God to heal my children um, and feeling helpless because there is nothing that I can do that God may not choose to heal them this side of heaven, but letting them know that at the same time, it's not because of something they have done. Oh, yeah. um, but it's like, I'm sorry you're in pain and he may not choose to heal you, but how, how can you allow God to use this as a part of your story um, to speak into other people's lives? Um, yeah, that's probably one of the hardest. I bet, yeah. And let me just say, like, I love, I love, you put your faith on display in that journey and in that pain, and we prayed with you and, and agonized with you, and but I just, I, I think it's extraordinary the way you've walked that with Jesus. So I just want to affirm you. Like, you guys are all amazing in your own way. That's why you're here. Um, I will partial to the one in the end. <laughs> Super cute. But um, the, uh, <laughs> the rest of you guys are okay, you know. No, but that, no, thank you so much. <laughs> Just get your <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, with my kids being so young, I think I'm the youngest up here, but um, I think it's just so exhausting. Like, I don't know that I was prepared for how exhausted I would be. <laughs> And it's not just physically, but like mentally and emotionally. Um, so to be like just so exhausted and not feel like you can't give your kids everything that mm. you want to um, or that you see that they need, but I'm a finite person and I can't, I can't do it. So um, yeah, that's where I have to trust that God has them and that he's taking care of them when I can't. And, um, but yeah, that's been probably the most difficult for me. Yeah, I think we're all in the same boat. It's, uh, so from that moment when I said, I will meet every need, to watching them grow and not being able to meet every need. And uh, we, two of our children have struggled with mental health illness and nothing you can do and uh, feeling like a failure and feeling responsible. I think those have been very difficult moments. You know, if I had done it better, if I'd been a better mom, if they'd had the right school or the better friends, or I had not taken them to camp or whatever it might be, the, yeah. the what ifs. Hmm. Can we dig a little deeper into the faith part, especially as it relates? It could be pain, it could be the triumphs, it could be anything, but just specifically, how has your faith in Christ or how has Jesus walked you through some of these seasons. Um, I know that there's some, now you're not the only one crying. Now we're, we're here. Um, so this is an incredible gift that they're sharing with us today. So thank you for, for being part of this. But this is a real window into real lives. So thank you. Um, yeah, why don't you start with that? So I remember vividly the day I said, Jesus, you have to deal with this because I can't. And can you drive for a while? And the conversation could be summarized like, 
when did you think I wasn't driving? <laughs> what made you think you were in control? Mm. And then this verse that has become my life verse in Proverbs, don't lean on your old, own understanding, uh, trust in God, in everything submit to him, and you will make your way straight. And God kind of walked me through that. You're super competent. You've done lots of great things. You are smart. You have done this. You have accomplished that. He said, but the problem is you've started to trust in your know-how more than my know-how. And guess mm. what? I have more than you do. Trust in the Lord. Do not lead on your own understanding. And you've been gathering a lot of these reins of how to help your children, how to fix your children, how to mind your children. And you actually haven't asked me which of the reins are important right now. Mm. And the result is that your perspective on not only them, but on life, is through your eyes, not my eyes. Mm -hmm. And guess what, Elizabeth? That moment when you held your baby, it wasn't my time to tell you how to be a perfect mom. It was actually me giving you a gift of what a perfect moment is, what love feels like, what relationship is. I love your children more than you do. Mm. And you need to let go. You need to speak to me about how you can be more effective. Mm. So that's kind of, you guys have, I think, talked about being more involved with God throughout your parent, your mothering journeys. And I came to it later. I was so busy. I did everything. And I did it all. And there's just that moment that God said, guess what? You're not it. <laughs> Um, mine, I think, very much along the same lines as Elizabeth, but um, God's been really teaching me a lot, kind of twofold, about, like, first, my identity in Him um, as a child of God, and, and become a young mother, there's so many messages um, from the world that come in of how to do this, what's best for your kids, what... If you're a good mom, you'll do this this way, and if you're if you don't, then you're a bad mom. And, and there's just so much, um, just incoming things and and pressure. And so, for me, I I think I was a little bit rebellious at the beginning of just being like, no, like I'm doing this my way. Like I'm not listening to any of this. Like, um, and a part of that was learning to trust that God had put my mothering instincts in me and that he, I know my kids better than the world knows my kids, but that they're not my kids, they're his kids, and that he created them. He created their little hearts and they, he knows how they work, how they tick, how they're unique, and um, I need to draw my wisdom from him because he knows them better than I ever will, um, even though as the mother, like, that's usually the most mm. intimate relationship for a child. Um, but I still don't know them as well as he does. So he's teaching me how to just trust them to him and to really, really, really just pray. Like, pray, 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 pray. Um, in passing, but also just, like, devoting time to get on my knees and pray for my kids um, when I don't know what to do and I don't know... Um, how to respond to something or how to teach them about something. So, um, yeah, it's huge. Like, my relationship with Christ is, is that's what sustains me as a mother. I don't know if I could do it without it. Mm. I think that, well, obviously, we can't do it on our own strength. Um, and there have been times as a mom that I needed to be reminded of that when everything I was doing wasn't going how it was planned. Um, I think that, was it how I draw on my strength, on my faith with? Yeah, Kay. how Jesus factored into that. Okay, thing. so for me, well even before I had kids, for me it was about the moments that I spent with God throughout the day whether it be, like, in whatever task that I was doing, um, the conversation that I would have with God throughout the day. So it wasn't just, oh, I'm going to pray now, and then I'm going to go on with my task. But then as I went into motherhood, those conversations continued. The, the conversation switched up a little bit, but the conversation continued with God throughout the day of just 
well, I can't do this, and they're not getting it, like potty training in particular. <laughs> um, or even just, I can teach my children about the importance of having a relationship with God, but I can't make them have a relationship with God. And that is hard because there is so much I wish that that they could grasp now and learn. Like, I just want them to get it. Um, and to embrace it. Um, are you listening, girls? <laughs> oh, just, they're listening. <laughs> um, but at the end of the day, they're, even though they've been entrusted into our care, they're not ours. They're God's. Yeah. Um, and we can't do it without him. And whether it's celebrating the victories or going through painful um, seasons... He is there with us. He has never failed us. He is there with us, and he provides exactly what we need when we need it. Hmm. Um, (laughs) That's not the way to start that. Um, He's... He's... I, I, I'm really, I have so many, you asked that question, I have like 40 things flooding into my mind. We don't have time for 40 things. Um, I remember when I first held Sam and he, <laughs> he no, it was, it was one night and he wasn't going to sleep. I had fed him, I had changed him and there he is screaming in my arms and I'm like, oh my God. And, and I started crying. And so we're both standing there crying at each other. And I thought, what, what have I done? This is, it took five years to have Sam. And I was like, what have I done? And I never, I'll never forget this, this overwhelming feeling of, you didn't do anything. You were, what? You didn't do anything. This is, this is my, this is my child with you. You are going to have, that sounded really bad. Um, This is the child that is, that I have meant for you, you are to have this child. And it was in that moment that I realized God was showing me that I am a steward of these children. They're not actually my children, I'm a steward of these children. And through the, the things that we've been through, I have looked at them and said, you did not come into this world to experience this and this and this and so, somehow we're all going to figure this out with God in mind. And I feel like I'm in a stage now. There was a stage where he was answering prayer after prayer after prayer without me even praying it. Um, Going from being a stay-at-home mom to my marriage falling apart to my children getting into daycare when they were 101 and 102 on the list. I got student housing when I was number 85. We sold our house and we made money so that we could pay for the divorce. You know, like things like this kept happening over and over again. Um, I'm in school, my, my children are babies and I'm in school and I meet my tribe, my people that are not Christians. Um, and they are my people. They are the people that are helping me get through People say, how did you do it? And I'd say, ah, oh, two pots of coffee and my people. When I know, I know that it was God giving me the words for all the essays and helping me to memorize things and to get my degree. Um, but then it got really hard. Um, I was still doing everything on my own and it gets really lonely at 11 o'clock at night or at, <laughs> When do your children go to bed? Because for me, it's 7.30, and it's really hard not to have anybody to tap off to and still keep your cool. Um, The times when you get called and say, we can't take your son anymore. And, And you're freaking out, and you can't. There's nobody there, just me. And I know God is there. And that's why he got into the amazing schools that he's in now. And now I'm in a real stage of God rebuilding me 
now and looking and, and just that balance of saying, it, you do have to rebuild yourself, my dear, in order to be a good parent to those two. And just keeping a balance of that, that's where God is. And God showing me that, oh, no, 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 you can give it all away. You can give away all the love and the care and the compassion because I am right there filling you up. And you don't have to be scared. You don't have to walk through this life with a feeling of scarcity. You don't have to walk through this life thinking that you're a failure because your marriage ended. You don't have to feel like you're tired all the time because you can just keep giving and giving and giving. And I'm right there filling you up and just trusting that that will happen mm -hmm. over and over again. Mm -hmm. um, I just want to pass it back to the next question because that was really good. Um, I would definitely agree that when they were little, I was very much in the motions of doing, just doing and getting it done, and in the, in a community of people that were doing and getting it done. And uh, as they have gotten older, um, again, it's so funny when you ask questions. You're like, I was just talking to. This. I literally ten minutes ago I was just saying like, my new. It's it has been like at the foot of the cross. I am placing this child at the foot of the cross, I'm placing this, and it feels like all day long, I'm placing my children, my extras, my, you know. And what does that you know, mean? Can you explain? That means um, um, that they are not, that I know beyond a shadow of a doubt, there is nothing I can do to fix or to heal, but he can. Mm -hmm. And, um, the hardest part is that as a mom and also being a doer, it's just like, like double whammy, um, like I want to fix now, right? But the now is not the best. Mm -hmm. And I have to remember that, is that the best for my kids and those I love and consider as kids that his best may yet be yet to come and that my job is to continually lay them at the foot of his cross for his best plan in his timing because the journey to get there is going to be so huge that if I fix it now all that he has planned wouldn't come mm -hmm. to fruition and all the goodness and all the, you know, because I just wanted it now mm -hmm. and not in his timing and, and, and all the goodness that could come from it. That's good. You know, one of the things that we've learned, Shauna and I, in our, in our parenting, but I, and I've heard it echoed throughout all of your stories, is uh, I, I, I re had this realization that even if I were a perfect parent, so even if you were a perfect mom, you would still produce an imperfect child, <laughs> right? Like, so that you can't parent someone out of a need for a savior to save them from their sins, right? Like, so sometimes we go, oh, they're so sinful. Yep, they're human, right? And so on one hand, there's this, you, you could be discouraged by that, going, well, what's the point? Well, no, there's a huge point, right? Because you're modeling the work of God in their lives. You're, you're showing them the way, you're influencing them, and all of you guys have done such a phenomenal job. But I want to say to you, and you know this, and I want to say it to the rest, is that our children aren't actually the verdict on us. The verdict on us is Jesus being willing to pay for our sins because he so desperately wanted us. That's the verdict on, your, on our worth and all of that, right? And so easy to forget all that. Um, now this is the, probably the hardest question. I'm gonna end, I'm gonna skip one. And I'm gonna, we're gonna end on this. And, and some of you are gonna go, I don't know, or this feel, feels vain or whatever, but if, you, if we would get your kids up here and, and we, we caught them at just the right moment, um, what do you think they might say you got right or are getting right that they appreciate about your parenting, your mothering? <laughs> so I ain't touching that. <laughs> I told you. No. Oh. 
what do they say? Like, what do they, what do they write on cards? And what do they, like, you know what I mean? Like, I, some, some of them are younger, but wh- what do you think they, they see in you that's good? Because I think the reason I'm asking this is we're so good at seeing our own faults. And there's nothing wrong with saying, Jesus has done this, he's helped me with this, and I think this is going okay. <laughs> I think I'm doing this all right, and at least they think so. really hard. You know that. That's I not know that. fair. Yeah. <laughs> that's low, man. If we're not starting with you, we're ending with you. Yeah. So, no. um, I know one thing that they say, <laughs> which they don't always like, but I think sometimes they like, is like, I just dig. <laughs> like, like, I don't give up. Like, I'm in their face all the time. What's going on? No, what's really going on? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you're saying you're okay, but we know you're not okay. And I won't leave them alone. <laughs> and I know you laugh, she but speaks ask them. Truth. It's true. <laughs> 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 yeah. And part of and and there's like I always say like there's that Nancy Drew gene in me that's like the need to know. But it goes beyond that. Like yeah. I'm in my I'm in yeah. my kid's face that's is good. um when you know, when they don't want me there, um, <laughs> but I get stuff out. You do. I get stuff out. You really out. do. And um, I think another thing um, is, uh, I thought somebody was yelling at something. You can't um, keep, we got like a oh. couple minutes left, so just okay. No, oh. you can finish, but I just, oh, no, just say it. Oh, yeah. um, they say that I'm, they say that um, they um, have, seen what it is to be like driven like to not let something stand in the way just that just because there's a boundary there just if they're supposed to then you just you put like you just you're driven so I think yes I agree okay Okay. um I I actually asked my kids this and it was over breakfast at Red's Diner, so that might not have been the best choice because they all went, because you buy us crepes. <laughs> thanks, thanks, feel great. So I'll just keep buying you crepes and I'm, I'm gonna be awesome. Uh, two things came to mind. I, I, um, I, I hope that my kids, what they're learning from me is that through God's power, we can do things. We can do things. Like they were with me in student housing. They were with me. They come to school, like, like I'm a teacher. They, they come to school with me, and they see me do things. I, I think also, too, in our home, we try to be real with each other. Um, I was really cranky with my son, and he was feeling that energy, and he was, my kids were getting that energy, and I just stopped and went, it's not you. I'm not, you're not doing anything wrong. I am, I've got 42 things in my head, and I'm stressing out, and I'm sorry. And, and they, all, they, they both just kind of went, ah, you know? I have learned to apologize to my kids when I've lost my cool. I mean, I'm, I, I know where Sam gets some of his personality traits, <laughs> let's just say. Same with my daughter. And, and I hope that they will look back and go, our mom knew how to apologize. My mom, our mom was honest. And our mom would sit down with us and go, you know what, we can't talk about that right now, but we're gonna come back to that. Mm-hmm. And you're telling me you're stressed, I see that, I hear that, can we talk about it in an hour, or something like that. That's and that's what I hope they'll take. Yeah. I hope. They didn't say that yesterday at the diner, but, you know. <laughs> um, Josh would say, because we gave in and gave him a puppy. Um, <laughs> But I think there's two things that are important, and at the end of the day, I want my kids to know that it's about Jesus. And secondly, life skills, life skills, life skills. Mm -hmm. So I push life skills in our home because I'm I'm not always going to be there for them. Mm -hmm. And there's things that they need to do, and we have had seasons in our life where things were turned upside down, and my kids did it. They could prepare a meal and do laundry and do all of these different things because Rob and I could not be there in that moment because we were caring for a parent. And they did it, and they did it together. And so those are the two things. That's awesome. uh, I asked my kids too, Jack said, because you take me to the park, 
Mm. And Felix said, because you help me find Lego pieces. Um, <laughs> so, which takes a lot of patience. Um, <laughs> those tiny little things. Um, but I think that just speaks to um, two things, just being where they are and spending time with them. Um, but also, like since the beginning, because we have twins, we've been very aware and intentional about the fact that they are two different people with different personalities and different gifts, and they are, um, we've never wanted to make them be the same or like the same things. Or mm -hmm. So as much as we're trying to teach them and model things and to be, um, to parent them, um, at, on the same, same token, it's like, to let them be who they are and to not have to force them to be like each other or to yeah. be what we think they should be. Um, so to develop their, their, their gifts, their interests and talents and stuff. And, and that's all, it, it's, it speaks to how God has created them. It's not what, what I need them to be to fill my emotional needs because mm -hmm. I get my identity from God. And so it's not about me, it's about, um, say gardening, like helping them grow into yeah. the person that God has made them to be. That's good. And um, I think my kids would say that um, what they value is that I'm available. So if they need to talk, if they need mm. to share, if they want to have a tea, if they want to have a phone call, that I'm there. And because I'm trying not to hold all the reins anymore, it's mm -hmm. not about fixing their problems, but it's about sharing their lives. So. Thank you. Thank you so much. Can we give these ladies a hand? That, that was amazing. Thank you so much.